I've been getting a ton of questions about the BooksGo 10.3 and I wanted to break down a little bit of my thought process of the pros and cons of considering whether it's worth it or not. It's certainly a device that's taken the market by a storm. There's a lot of talk about it online. So I wanted to break things down into three aspects of what I considered before deciding to buy it or not. And that would be the physical aspects, the software, and the competition. I broke things down into pros and cons because I always find that to be a pretty useful method of evaluating whether it's worth it or not and worth the 379 that it costs. So for the physical aspects, for the pros, it's 375 grams and 4.6 millimeters thin, which is very thin. Uh, it's thinner than the Remarkable. And from the design, you can obviously see that they're targeting the Remarkable. I mean, when I first saw it, I was like, wait, is that a new Remarkable? But no, it's their competition and their entry into this kind of distraction-free category. We'll talk a little bit about that more. And so one of the benefits is it does have a small footprint. As you can see here in this Reddit post, someone put it next to a Remarkable. It's smaller in every dimension, pretty much, with still a good 10.3 size. One of the cons, though, about that is whether it's going to be upgradable or not, right? The Supernote platform has now shown that that is possible in a relatively thin tablet, and the Remarkable, very thin currently. We don't really know what's going to come when, that, when that's here. The A5X2 will likely be modular as well, and so you have to think, is this going to be something that you can upgrade, right? We'll talk a little bit more about the specs and whether you'll need to upgrade that or not, but that is certainly something to consider. About the kind of footprint of it, the case that comes with it, from what I've seen, isn't the highest quality. It does the job and it's included, so that's a nice little perk, but it's not the best in viewing for the vertical orientation. Now, one of the pros of the Go 10.3 design is the closer to paper feel. And that's something that the Remarkable and the Supernote here have going for them, where it really feels like you're writing on paper. Because of the lack of that layer of the front light, it is a closer experience. Now, the con is you don't get a front light. And this is something you really need to evaluate of where you use your device. My Remarkable and my Supernote, I've never found that I needed a front light. But my scribe, for example, has one, and that is nice when I'm reading in bed or something. Now, the pen that's included is of a lower quality from what I understand. It is white, kind of like the Remarkable marker. The typical books ones are black. From what I've seen online, and I've watched all the content by like Jeffrey Moss, his series. I watched uh, a rant that Ed had, uh, shout out to Ed from Organizing for Change, that he talked about yesterday about some of the things I'm gonna discuss here. And so the pen, from what I understand, is a little lower quality even than the main books ones they give with like the Note Air 3 or the Note Air 3C. So just FYI, but it is included. So that's a, a factor into the overall cost you need to kind of evaluate. It does also have a magnet um, that is apparently pretty weak. And I think that's why they included the little flap that when you have it closed like this, it kind of pinches here and holds it in. From what I understand, you know, that, I think that's good for transporting, but it can be a little bit awkward, um, and that might be something else you can lose. And then the four gigabytes of RAM and the good chipset are solid. We've seen that from the Node Air 3 and the Node Air 3C. That's an octa-core processor, 2.4 gigahertz, and is something that uh, performs well from what we've seen. Now, the 64 gigabytes, it seems like a lot. That's a lot more than you get on the Remarkable. I think this has eight gigabytes. This Nomad has 32 gigabytes, but you have to consider this has expandable storage up to two terabytes. And so like the Node Air 3 and the Node Air 3C, they do have expandable storage as well. And so for most people, this is not gonna be an issue, I don't think, because 64 gigabytes is a good amount when you're dealing with these e-ink tablets. But if you're someone that uses like school documents where you have PDFs that are hundreds and hundreds of pages, that could potentially fill up quickly or if you're really heavy on the Android apps, and those apps uh, require a lot of kind of uh, storage and data, then that is something you do need to consider for sure. And then lastly, on the physical aspects, the pen feel. 
I'm gonna go into a goodie readers video here. It also feels good. This feels significantly better than the Onyx when it comes to a writing feel. This is easily top three behind the Fujitsu Quaderno. This one is very nice. It sounds really good. You get a good reverberation through the pen. It's got that nice sandpapery texture to the screen. It is such good quality. This one doesn't. It slips right off the page and it just doesn't feel as good in your hand. It's not awful and it's a far swing away from a glass tablet or a cell phone. So don't worry about that. It's not going to feel like you're writing on a piece of glass. That's not what we're getting at, but it is our job to nitpick and the Remarkable feels significantly better. And so you can see he talks about how it does not feel as good. That's kind of the consensus of what I've seen online from like Reddit reviews and all the reviewers I've watched talk about this device. But Pen feel is very subjective. Like when the Remarkable first came out, I gotta remember this is four years old, I was like, this is really good feel. And then when I tried Feel Rate 2, I was like, this is just so much better. And so, like I said, that's really subjective to your writing style, uh, what type of pens or pencils you like to use. So re read into that with a grain of salt. Now next, I wanna talk a little bit about the software. And this is actually one of the things I was most surprised with. So it does have full Android. When I saw it launched, I was assuming because it's targeting Remarkable that it was gonna be a very dumbed down version of the OS, kind of like the Supernote runs in Android skin, but just gives you access to certain things. You can sideload APK Android files, but that's far and few between because that's a whole process in and of itself. But that was one of my kind of things where I was like, a little confused and um, actually Kit was doing a live stream a couple weeks ago. I'll show you here. What we talked about on a live stream recently, uh, myself, Boyer and uh, Brandon is maybe you could have one of these be like focus mode. You know, that would be cool, wouldn't it? Like put the whole thing into focus mode and then just give you the reader and the note taker, uh, that's all. And so that's certainly something that I thought it would have. On one hand, the pros are that you do have Android, so you can use stuff in the workflow that you want, like Google Docs, OneNote, Excel, all that stuff, any productivity stuff like Notion. But that kind of takes away from the really like focused approach of having it just be like a writing device slash tool. But some people might want that, so it's certainly uh, there for you if you want it. And then another thing in the software is it's very customizable, so you can kind of customize anything the way you want. Uh, but I have seen a Goody Reader's video and uh, another video I watched yesterday, uh, I think it was called The Books Go 10.3 is Weird, um, where there's a lot of like UI inconsistencies. So, and I don't mean to be negative about this because I, I do think they're doing something good here, but I think they need to focus on, and no pun intended, they need to focus on like a better UI and uh, just user experience basically. There's a reason that Remarkable has sold you know, 2 million plus devices at this point now. And it's really because of the ease of use and it's just trying to do one thing and it does it well. Just replace your notebook, right? I do think this is a competitor to the Remarkable and the Supernote. I can't see people in a business meeting being given a Books Go 10.3 and just like, you're off to the races, right? This is, this is something that's certainly dominated the market, I think because of that reason and the ease of use and simplicity. And there's something to be said about that. If books can kind of refine that UI user experience, then I think they can actually start to compete a little more with the Remarkable. Right now, I just think it's a good alternative. I don't really think it's much of a competition. Another thing would be the battery life. So it's um, apparently pretty good from what I've heard. And that I think comes down to it having no book super refresh. And Super Refresh is just a technology that uses like a GPU to refresh the e-ink so you don't really get ghosting. With the different speed modes, you can like watch video and you can use apps that you probably can't use on this uh, Supernote. And then another pro I was talking about is like everything is tweakable, but those reading modes I think could be a con because some people, they just want a device that it is doing the best it can at every moment. And you do need to play around with a lot of that stuff to get the best experience. A con is the pen from what I've seen from Goody Reader. I think it has 20 to 30 milliseconds latency. And that's not bad at all, but it is lower than the Supernote and the Remarkable, I believe. But uh, one pro is, it's kind of a pro con, but they had tilt support. I think when it came out, 
And then some people complained that it was freezing up the device, so they removed it, but that is something they could add back. And then one thing I think is just generally a pro with no cons is the split view they have. And that's something that I uh, wish these devices had, the Remarkable End Super Note here or the Kindle Scribe, but uh, they do not. And so if I had to equate the software to something, I feel like the best analogy I can give, I'm a car guy, it's like, it's kind of like, let's say you had a Jeep Wrangler and it's all tricked out with like a winch, a snorkel, a lift kit. So it's something that is capable and can do all these things, but then you put like street or racing tires on it. That's kind of what the approach of having no front light is like to me, because I think for a lot of these things, I would want a front light when I'm using like Android apps and all that. That's just my opinion, but uh, chime down in the comments what you, you think about that. And now onto the competition. I think there's probably four different types of competition here. And one is the either the Remarkable 2 or the Remarkable 3. That's certainly well overdue. I made a whole uh, Remarkable 3 wish list video if you want to check that out. But I think they have the slick design and the kind of ease of use like I was talking about. That's really going for them. Yes, you do need to pay uh, a subscription and it's uh, $2.99 per month. So over the course of four years, that can be you know well over 100 bucks. So you do need to consider that. The A5X2 is something that will be a direct competition. It's probably coming out in the fall. It's been a little delayed, but that will have an incredibly long lifespan like we've seen with the Nomad here. And uh, that, uh, in my opinion, like I said, has the best pen feel, but that is all up to the user kind of preference. And then finally, the Scribe here uh, for external competition. And that's something that is you know a, a good note-taking device. Uh, they've been improving the features pretty pretty frequently, and um, I did a whole review of that. But the benefit of that is it's really cheap, has a front light. I think right now under a week away from Prime Day, and it's at $110 discount. So during Prime Day, it's probably going to be even cheaper. So like over $100 cheaper than the Go 10.3, and that does significantly have less distractions, I think, here. I think the Note Air 3 is actually one of the biggest competitions within books itself. It's only 20 bucks more expensive. You're getting arguably not as pretty of a design, I will admit, but you get a little bit of a better pen from what I understand, and you get a front light, and you get uh, you know just as good battery life, basically. So. For me, like I was mentioning, for Android apps I want to use, there are instances where I think I would want a front light. And this is uh, basically the same specs, and you get expandable storage. So that is certainly some competition within Books itself. They do have, from what I understand, the software can be transferable between the two. So if they do make a more focused mode, that could see its way to the Note Air 3 as well. But I will say you are getting 227 PPI versus 300 PPI. The Books Go 10.3 uses Carta 1200. This is probably Carta 1000 or something like that. And um, so that is a noticeable difference if you're using a lot of PDFs, for example. Yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the comparisons here, uh, what your thought process is maybe. Maybe I missed something. But uh, like I said, I've been looking at a lot of the content and this is kind of what I've seen. So I hope that was helpful to you in any way. I decided to not buy one because I have a Remarkable, I have this, I have the Scribe, and I have a, a pocketbook color which has all my reading needs and color and whatnot. So uh, anyways, thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful.